All right. Now in this question, we are talking about a certain wholesaler who supplies goods on a regular basis to various retailers. Then it says a retailer can choose to receive the same numbers and types of goods on a regular basis without having to submit a new order every time using something called a standing order. Now this is what? Let's just try to understand this here. Imagine this is your wholesaler. This is the retailer. Now right now it's talking about a situation that if you know that these are the items you want, say type A and type B, and the number of items, the number of units that you want of each type, that also you know, and this is the you know your requirement based on the demand you have, then you can just place a standing order with the wholesaler. That way the wholesaler will automatically process your order at whatever your decided duration is and you will not have to come and again and again place a fresh order which is what generally would happen, okay, okay, this is my requirement, I need this thing on this date, and then, then I need this thing after two more days, and so on. That's when you come every time and place a fresh order, but right now we're talking about a standing order, okay. Now let's read further. Now it talks about the flowchart. It says the flowchart represents all the steps in the process for evaluating and accepting or evaluating and rejecting a request to edit a standing order. Oh, now that is a new thing. Till now, we first understood what a fresh order is, what a standing order is. Now, this entire flowchart is about editing a standing order. So, now there is a retailer who had earlier placed some standing order, but now he wants to edit it. So, what happens in such a case? How is it that the wholesaler evaluates it and either he will accept this edit request or he will reject this edit request? So, there are only two results of this request from the retailer. As I said, evaluate and accept this is one thing that the wholesaler can do another thing is evaluate and then finally reject obviously evaluation will happen before the wholesaler decides to reject or accept this request so this is the whole situation we will just quickly look at the flowchart a little and then move forward so you see it also tells you that this starts with editing in uh, editing the terms of a standing order now accounting approval needed is that something which is needed in this edit process if it is needed then you see okay does accounting approve it well if it does not the edit is already rejected but there is also a situation where accounting approval is not needed so that is shown by no if it is not needed you go to the next stage okay then is management approval needed again if it is needed and it's not approved it gets rejected but if it's not even needed then again you proceed to the next level similarly if you came to the stage again where accounting approval is given then also you see is management approval needed or not needed so essentially you can think about this as stages where first you are thinking about accounting approval needed or not needed if it is needed do you get it or you don't get it then you come to the second stage where it is about the management approval approval first again do you need it or you don't if you don't need it simply move on but if it is needed then you see is it approved or is it not approved then you go to the next stage what is the next stage as you read you will find it it's about whether these items which are in the edited order are they even stocked so third stage is to check the stock now if they are in the stock you accept it but if they are not already stocked then first you add them then you accept it. So at this stage, either you directly accept it if they are already available. So accept happens here, which is the final stage, remember. But if they're not available currently, then first you restock, then you accept. In all of the other situations, there were two possibilities happening. Sometimes you were accepting, sometimes rejecting. In all of these, based on approval. Rejection was only happening if you don't really get approval. So look at this, where are the edits being rejected? One, if you get a no here, accounting does not approve. Second, if you get a no here, where management does not approve. In all other cases, it's never rejected. You know, either it's like the approval was not even needed, or if it was needed, then you do get the approval, and hence you move to the next stage. This is the entire flow. We broke it in a high level stages of what it is passing through. We understood how it's being accepted, rejected. And we saw at the final stage, there is something that you need to do sometimes before acceptance or can you directly accept with this we completely understand all of this information and now we're going to read what the question is asking if you found the analysis of this data set helpful then hit that like button so that other gmat aspirants can also learn from it and to stay tuned with such content hit the subscribe button below now to take your learning to the next level we have put together a free trial in which you can experience content in all the sections tested on gmat focus edition for example you can build your cr pre thinking skills you can learn how to approach statistics questions in graphics interpretation 
as part of DI, you can learn everything about linear inequalities as tested on the GMAT Focus Edition and a lot of other content. The link for this is in the description. Now, let's get back to the question at hand. So here is a question and you have two different blanks in a single statement. We will just have to select which choice here makes sense. But before that, obviously, we'll read the question stem. There is often information here and sometimes it also directs us how to think about it. So let's read this. So the stem says that G is a group of requests. It's not one request. It's a lot of requests that came from different, different uh, retailers. G is a group which is evaluated using the process we just learned. And then for this group, you have to select which choices make sense. So we really got nothing much except that G represents a group of requests, not a single request. Now read further. If each request in G and then you, cho you have your choices. If each request was approved by accounting, was approved by management, resulted in items being added, so restocking, then if each request went through one of these things, then it must have been the case then. Okay, so if we choose this choice, then the rest of it is a guaranteed situation that that has to happen. It must have been the case that some, but not all of the requests, all of the requests, none of the requests. So we're still talking about the request and it's like how many that I'm trying to answer. How many? In that case, dash of the requests in G included one or more items that were not currently stocked in the warehouse. This not currently stocked actually hints at the third stage in my flowchart. Remember, once I had the account thing, that was my stage one. Second stage was thinking about management and approval and all of that. Third stage was when the stock part comes. So I will only talk about being restocked or not being available if the first stages are complete. You know, it could mean either they were approved at these stages or it could mean that approval was not even needed. So this already tells me that I have to start thinking from this stage when I already already come to this stage where I'm answering the question on whether the items in the request are already stocked or not. So I know where to look now, but still let's read. If each request was dash. So if I try to see which one connects with the third stage, then the connection with the third stage is choice C. Now, I'm not sure yet, but we will have to still read and, and you know try to fit the data together. It's like we have to think about both blanks simultaneously. So if each request in G resulted in items being added, so resulted in items being added, basically, let me just keep it in a simple language, resulted in restocking. If each request resulted in restocking means what? When does an item result in restocking? What did we just find out? We find in the flow chart here that restocking will happen if it's not already in the stock. No. See when the answer here is no to the question, are they already stocked? Then you add things. So if each request ended up in, you know, restocking stuff, adding more stuff, then it definitely means that each of these had something missing, something that was unstocked. All of these requests had that element. So then this connects with all. Read it completely now. If each request in G resulted in restocking, then it must have been the case that all of the requests included one or more items. That means at least something was there in the request that was not currently stocked. If you were not currently stocked, that's why you are being restocked. Perfect. So when I see these two together, they make absolute sense. At this point, let me ask you this. Could you have arrived at the approach of solving this question with this level of clarity had you not spent the effort in thoroughly understanding the information presented? Such is the power of the process of owning the data set. And because this skill may not come naturally to many of you, we have created a course architecture that ensures that we teach you this skill through every guided quiz in the EGMAT DI course and we reinforce the same in every practice quiz. In fact, the way we apply translate process skills so comfortably in this question, in the EGMAT course, you will learn how to build this translate process skill through purpose-built exercises. Thus, throughout the DI course, through around 500 questions, you will learn such process skills so that you can also comfortably use the owning the data set approach. Let's now get back to the solution at hand. See how clarity with the three stages that I had here helped me quickly go to the third stage of stocking. I didn't have to think about other things. In fact, I found it very easy to not look at this in the beginning and have a starting hypothesis at least. It could come out wrong later. We might have to think later. But this starting understanding ended up, you see, saving a lot of time. All of that upfront clarity that we built here, it helped us 
narrow down to the third choice here and then accordingly try to find when is it that each request really will lead to a restocking it simply means that each request had things that were not currently in stock because that is the only thing which then connects with restocking and that is it shows the power of understanding your data set completely owning it thoroughly building an approach before jumping into data